Then I see in green. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. Believing in one God relates to the first commandment. Um, he is almighty and powerful and um, he is the only one who's, who is powerful enough to create everything that is around us, visible and invisible, which is humans and everything that we see and breathe. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. This part of the Nicene Creed refers to that Jesus was not created by the Father, but has always existed. Therefore, Jesus is of the same substance as God the Father. Therefore, both are one in the same. God from God, life from life. God the Son exists in relation to God the Father. The Son is not the Father, but they both are God. Just as the torch is lit to one another, the Father and Son are distinct, but both light to the world. True God from true God. God the Son is fully and utterly God distinct but not separate from the Father. This was to counter the thoughts of the Arians. They believed that Jesus could be called God but not true God. In other words, they believed that Jesus was a creature, the first creation of God, necessary to mediate between the honourable distant God and creation. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. These lines indicate the shared essence of divinity within the Trinity between the two persons of the Father and the Son. Jesus is fully God and he is eternal, just as the Father is eternal. And as all things were made by God, the teachings from Genesis are introduced, indicating that the Nicene Creed's importance is encompassed in not just itself, but in other authentic texts. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. This is in direct accordance with John chapter 3 verses 60. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This concerns God's salvific plan to save humankind from sin, which was made possible through the next line, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. This regards our belief in the Theokotos, meaning God-bearer, which concerns our belief in Mary's immaculate conception through the Holy Spirit, reinstated in John 8.50. For I have not come for my glory. This means that Jesus came to earth for the sake of men. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried again, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. This specific part of the Nicene Creed directly refers to his death being a form of salvation for humans as he suffered and sacrificed himself for our sins. Whilst on the cross, he states, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Luke chapter 23 verse 34, becoming an example of his loving and forgiving nature that guides us to be better people to achieve eternal life with God in the kingdom of heaven. Furthermore, in accordance with the scripture, references back to the fulfillment of the Old Testament that had mentioned his passion, death and resurrection. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. On the 40th day after Jesus' resurrection, his ascension shows that he had overcome death for good, as he would never die again, but live forever. When Jesus is seated at the right hand of God, it means that he has all authority and supremacy over everyone and everything, just like the Father. We read this in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 22. Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers have, having been subjected to him, Thus, he shares in the same authority as the Father, not just being seated in the position next to him. The ascension teaches us that heaven was Jesus' rightful place. And through Jesus' ascension, it also calls to attention how he has entrusted us with the mission to do good and to share about God, as Jesus has said this to his followers in Mark chapter 16, verses 15. Go everywhere in the world and tell the good news to everyone. This encourages us to live in the footsteps of Christ. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Forty days after rising from the dead, Jesus lifted himself up into heaven in a mysterious fashion, and he now reigns in heaven as a king, at the right hand of the Father. Hence we believe that he will come again in glory. This is what we call the second coming. At the second coming of Christ, we will all be judged. Everything we have done will be laid bare, and true justice will be accomplished. 
Alright, so the line about the Holy Spirit, so I believe in one Holy Spirit, refers to the Holy Spirit in the Trinity, essentially. So what the what the creed elaborates on is the Holy Spirit's basically significance as in teaching the Father and the Son beliefs within Christianity. So it was really important that belief was expressed and evident within our early Christian communities. Otherwise, we will not get the same message of Christ and the God the Father in the same way as we have now. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Um, so these lines are part of the Nicene Creed. Is a statement of Christian faith. In essence, they express the belief of unity, holiness, as well as the forgiveness of sins through baptism and hope for eternal life and resurrection it is a conscious way for Christians to affirm their core beliefs. Amen.